Greetings, and welcome back to Switch Linux. We have another supporter stream, and today we're chatting about the state of the internet. And we have two internationals on today, so woohoo! Two internationals and three of us whining about the internet in the world, right? And, uh, we always get fun <laughs> ideas about when and how and why to do some of these things. Today it was, uh, you know, of course I rely on cellular internet and stuff, and uh, I was going to park this wonderful little ocean coast. I was literally so close to Canada, I could have literally thrown a stick at, like, you know, just, it was literally a short, narrow river to Canada. My cellular modem thought I was in Canada, and it refused to work. I had to come inland to get internet. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> when I got inland, I was getting really good. I, I was getting, like, 40 down and, like, 30 up. So it was good, good internet once I got away yeah. from the river. But then it's like, you're in Canada, where you don't have Canada service. Like, what? I'm not in Canada. <laughs> it happened to me once. I was near the American border and just connected to AT and T, and it started roaming automatically and started charging me a couple of cents to use the I internet. It's problematic when you get close to a border. Um, yeah. D depending on what you're doing, but man, I'm telling. Like when I was down, uh, I was down only a few months ago. I was down, down really close to Mexico. I was, I was just about as close to the Mexican border, and and my phone welcomed me to Mexico. I was like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> It says my welcome to Mexico. Watch out, the drug cartels are coming. Right? <laughs> yeah, my sister has a place up by the Quebec border, and she gets French radio stations all the time. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, like if you know. go down to downtown Detroit, you can get a lot of Windsor radio and TV stations. You mm. can get Windsor Channel Nine TV. Nice. It's really weird. All right. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit more about some Starlink because I had a chance to have a conversation with some people um, who actually have the mobile RV Starlink. Everyone's like, you should look into doing that. Like, well, we'll, we'll talk. Um, so we have a bunch of a bunch of fun stuff going on today, uh, starting with the comments. James Cagney. Hello, James. Uh, don't think I've seen you before. At least I don't recognize your picture. Uh, Kelvin, how's it going there from New Zealand? The Anchorage is on. Hello, the Anchorage. Uh, good morning to you as roaming YouTube's hallway. Sorry for late reply. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. 17 minutes ago, three minutes, 30 seconds ago. Lemon squeeze, making lemonade over there. I see moon base of grace. Take me to your leader. Uh, let's see. The die master greetings. The kitty gives tanks. That's right. Uh, Alesso, good morning to you. Silver Ventures, Tom Traveling International without ever leaving the USA. I'm telling you. I mean, hey, see if if there's like some bad thing. I wonder. I wonder if they're gonna be like ask me if I've been if I've been outcheated or something. Like we we noticed you were in Canada. Have you been outcheated? Like no. <laughs> <laughs> leave me alone. That's actually why I went inland. I mean, I saw I saw the the spawn of Castro coming towards me with a Fauci outcheat. I'm like I'm out of here. <laughs> All right. All right. Enough joking aside. Um, how's everybody doing today? I'm doing fine. Yeah, good. We got fine. We got good. Yeah, I woke up today. Oh, you woke up. That's good. That's good news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I woke up yesterday, but. <laughs> yeah, I, I woke good. up. I I found a serendipitous place in the middle of nowhere that uh, I'm not sure if I was technically allowed to park on, but I parked there for two days anyway, and it was awesome. Middle of the woods, didn't see human beings for a couple of days. Uh, Always oh, great. Um, <laughs> so. Just one uh, fun uh, tidbit. Uh, every time that you say, uh, take me to your leader, I always get uh, a new spoils uh, song in my head. They have a song uh, that uh, says, uh, take me to your leader, and the album is called Take Me to Your Leader. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I think it's uh, almost uh, 30 years old now. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, we are going to go ahead and start in on our topic today. We're going to talk about the state of the Internet. I know uh, you guys international have it so much better than us here in the States. Um, me and my hundred something dollars for only 150 gigabytes of data. <sighs> um, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, exciting over here. Of course, you can do a little bit better in some places, depending where you are. If there is this thing called competition. Uh, they charge less, which is why we have anti-monopoly laws. We just need to have the buffoons up there in the government actually, you know, maybe enforcing them or maybe doing something other than investigating the nonsense they're investigating today. Um, maybe get to work and figure out how to solve real problems. But uh, that aside... Yeah, you know, um, the, the, the difference is in my country, we have uh, 
uh, at times we have uh, sensible uh, politicians uh, making sensible uh, uh, rules on how to how a corporation should behave. <laughs> I, I just I just can't like. Mm. Well, here's the thing about the United States: we do have sensible rules about how the comp- about how the the com- companies be- should behave. The problem is. Every time you catch a company doing something they shouldn't be doing and actually violating the law, they go, don't do that again. Or, thanks for the payout. And that's the problem we have is we have a whole lot yeah. of laws like like, um, you know, big news this week that, you know, your mainstream's not talking about is somebody uh, actually went in and attempted to um, uh, um, snuff out a uh, Supreme Court justice. Um, there's still people in front of the guy's house protesting right now. There's a bunch of police that are keeping the peace. It is actually completely federally illegal to protest in front of a judge's house. Period. Round them all up. Throw them in jail for five years. Okay? <laughs> I mean, really. So we have laws. The problem is finding a Soros-funded DA to um, actually enforce them. Uh, San Francisco, though, kicked out of their DA this week. That was awesome. Um, that, I don't know, San Francisco, we might see a turnaround in that place. They kicked out the school board. They kicked out their DA. I don't know what they're doing. Pretty, pretty soon, Donald Trump's going to be the mayor. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and there's another be difference crazy. between uh, Norway and uh, the U.S. And that is, uh, in the U.S., you have uh, if um, uh, some state or uh, the um, uh, U.S. Senate uh, um, uh, pushes some law uh, that uh, some corporations don't like, then they uh, um, sometimes can um, initiate a big lawsuit in order to uh, to uh, uh, overturn the uh, law because it's un- un- unconstitutional and uh, mm-hmm. some crap. Uh, that can't happen in in our country because uh, we we have a king and um, the uh, government uh, is uh, he, he, um, technically they are uh, his advisors. So it is the king who signs everything into law, or, or there is mm-hmm. no law. So and he uh, is the law. So yeah. Um, so the country comes in. It's unconstitutional. The king says no, it's not. <laughs> Off with his head. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, World Unix, how is the internet up there in Canada? So, I guess we still have, like, three big monopolies. We got uh, Bell, TELUS, and Rogers, really. That's, like, the big three. Then all mm. these smaller ones are basically owned now, by the three now, big three companies. When, company. yeah. when you say you have these three, of course, we have in the States, we have, like, Comcast and Time Warner. The problem is Comcast and Time Warner do not have overlap in their service maps. So do you guys have overlap in the service maps that you could go in oh. and feasibly choose which one of those he used? Well, he just has, uh, uh, he's having some internet connectivity issues. There you go. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay. I kind of heard what, what you, you said. Yeah, you so is it overlap yeah. or not? Well, overlap, well, uh, do you mean by the government? No, I mean, can you choose which one of those three you purchase from most places well yes and no i guess uh, nowadays you either have well rogers and bell because both of them have their own infrastructure so rogers has like the coaxial cable mm-hmm. and then bell has either the fiber op or well fiber mm-hmm. or they have dsl right okay. it's really those two companies that you really get to deal with but, and if, but yeah do you have the ability to choose which one of those you go no matter where you're at uh, not exactly, no. Like, sometimes you are going to be stuck with either one company. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, and that's the problem. We have the, the Comcast Time Warner overlap. I think it's 10%. Um, it's, it's a very small number. So we have multiple ones. They say, oh, we don't have a monopoly. Look, you can choose this or this. Well, you really can. Um, you know, you we just were, have to uh, move first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just have to move. That, that's the thing. Um, and up there in up there in Norway, you guys are pretty good with internet, right? Not, no, yeah, um, no, yeah, but uh, we, we have this um, sort of the same uh, problem with uh, uh, the, the ones uh, um, uh, uh, digging the uh, uh, fiber cables and the infrastructure it, into it, the ground. It, get, w- get world of Unix keeps off. jumping in and out, so that's how good the internet in Canada is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. So um, um, I have um, uh, an ISP that I use. And if I uh, want to choose another one, uh, someone has to uh, come and dig uh, at least uh, 20 kilometers of fiber cable from somewhere uh, downtown, and uh, and that's not going to happen. But uh, we have uh, sensible prices, and um, uh, and they, and uh, they don't uh, and they're not out to screw the customers uh, mm-hmm. because we have uh, the, uh, the, the the consumer uh, 
protection laws is, is quite strong in in uh, Europe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Ivan, what's the internet state look like where you're at? <clears throat> it's so well, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as our coaxial cable types or our cable cable, that's basically all uh, Comcast. So, and it does fairly well performance wise. Uh, and then after that, you got Fiverr, which is currently with a new business. It used to be called Fairpoint, but now it's, I, mm-hmm. I can't quite remember the name of the company because I haven't dealt with them or <clears throat> anything. Uh, and uh, they did the DSL, Fiverr, things of like that. So you can go with them and uh, they're all right because I had a relative that actually lived at the other side of this building uh, where he, where the the performance and quality of the service was all right, but it could have been better. He just went over to Comcast, got like the most expensive package because he's got cable and phone, mm-hmm. and it was just doing great. But uh, but in general, it's like I don't like Comcast, but that's what I've got, and it's been running great. I've been with them for twelve years, yeah. so I'm, I'm like I'm not gonna complain. I don't get regular cable TV. I only have the internet. I yep. stream everything, so yep. I get to watch these on my television, which there is you great. Go. I threw my yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've got a Roku, so it's great. There you go. That works. Uh, Dan, what's the internet like where you're at? Um, well, in my exact location, I'm privileged with having the choice of either having high-speed Comcast, which I refuse to do business with them, and um, what used to be the old phone company with the old phone lines and everything else, it's uh, Frontier. They offer DSL, and it's good enough for a family of one or two people. It's yeah, not real, it's not real fast. Don't expect to get your games, you know, downloaded in five minutes. It's more like five days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like the know. old days, right? When we would uh, on the thirty-three six, we'd download Netscape Navigator, but, and it would take overnight to download. <laughs> but the, the the price differential is so you know. Comcast will try and suck you in by a low introductory offer for six or 12 months. And then after mm-hmm. that, man, they like raise it a hundred dollars, you mm-hmm. know, they're yeah. in state I've done college. Some, I've done some reading and research early mm-hmm. on this week and Comcast is like on the top five U S most hated companies. Oh uh, yeah. They're they're yeah. They've been there for 15, 20 They're right years, there with yeah. bank of America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So but, it, in state college, um, my my home base area is the uh, Comcast is the only place you have if you want fast internet. There's you know a dozen you know minor little you know five one companies out there, but you know that's not really internet um, in modern. Yeah, if you standards. go five miles down the road, they have mm-hmm. Spectrum internet. Yeah, yeah, and it's the same. It's a cable company. It's just a competitor to Comcast, but they do not overlap. That's, if you live yeah. on one side of the street and it's Spectrum, and you and someone else lives on the other side of the street and it's Comcast, that's the only way it is. Yep. Yeah, and that's that's one of the the downsides that that we're seeing in a lot of these places. Yeah, um, I, had, I I had run into a, an issue when I was a young man where there's this road up by this town and um, kind of north from me, and on this road on one side of the road, it was a. Um, Ameritech, which used to be Michigan Bell. Now, on the other side of this road, and this is a dirt road with cows and pigs and everything else, you know, but on the other side of the road was GE Telephone. Mm-hmm. No. It was a long distance call to call across the street. <laughs> yeah, I, I do remember those days. Um, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we lived, uh, we lived um, right between county borders, and it was just like, oh, there's. Yeah, long distance. And then cell phones, like, whoa, I don't have long distance anywhere in the world. I'm just paying three cents a minute. You know, right. You know? Yeah. Um, but, you know, um, so where I kind of want to go is look at the state of the Internet. Of course, the whole world wants you to be Internet connected. But I think just based on the things I'm seeing, the usefulness of the Internet is actually getting worse, not better. Yeah. Well, just this week, I got a little flyer in the mail from... Um, oh, I got brain freeze. Um, 
another cell phone company. Name one. Is that one of the big ones or one of the, some yeah, of the small ones? Verizon. Verizon. Yeah. They're, they're now offering uh, LTE, LTE, 4G internet to your house at a given price. Yeah. Um, uh, T-Mobile is doing the same thing as well. Yeah. They claim it's, they claim it's pretty fast and reliable. Mm-hmm. But yeah, again... And, and- Generally, that's sort of what I have in the van, and it works pretty good, um, uh, depending on where you're at, of course. If you get too close to that Canadian border, it thinks you're in Canada, that's a problem. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> y- yeah, there's uh, there's certainly um, uh, certainly there is uh, a lot to be said about that. And uh, as, we, as we look uh, at things, though, one of the things I'm noticing is the availability is actually in some cases, some cases it's getting better. Some cases it's getting worse. Uh, let's talk Starlink for a little bit. Um, of course, satellite internet, they're just now pushing up the version two of the, of the satellites, which are supposedly going to be a lot better. So one thing people have asked me um, is, you know, have you considered Starlink for the van? Well, no, because there's, while it does have really good speeds, there are some fundamental problems problems with it still it will get better and as the technology gets better there will be a point in time where it becomes it so i was in acadia the other day and i did tell the story on uh, wednesday i did a live stream on wednesday but you know that was early in the day so not as much overlap so hopefully you haven't heard the story yet um i was in acadia the other day and i pull in there's another van just like mine with a starlink dish on top of the van which is kind of fun like well that's neat um and I didn't get a chance to talk with them yeah. then, um, but I ended up parking next to them at a Walmart that night. And in the morning, we chatted. Uh, they had their Starlink dish now over in a little median strip in Walmart, right? <laughs> they had some solar panels out powering it. And I asked them, well, how's it work? He's like, well, you know, the speed and stuff is really good, but you can't fundamentally use it because it takes so much power. And so what I'm seeing is I've seen a lot of people now jumping in the van life is like, oh, I got Starlink now. This is so amazing. Um, And I haven't seen if many of them yet are going to talk about the downsides. I wonder how long it's going to be before I start seeing videos of people going, yeah, I had to stop using it. It was consuming too much power. What they said is now the reports I heard earlier was like 65 to 90 watts. Mm. They were pulling a hundred and uh, saying a hundred to a hundred and fifty watts, which Ooh. is more than my streaming computer is pulling right now. Um, you cannot run my streaming computer a lot, um, and so be, just be, it's too much of a power hog. And so you would have to have huge dedicated batteries, and only pretty much use it during the day. Versus my current setup where I have camped all around the country. I've only not had internet in one spot. There was a second spot that I was going to stay there, couldn't get internet, so I left. So technically two spots. I'm paying about the same as you would pay for Starlink. I still get really good up, really good down, and the only downside is I have a data cap. Um, Yeah. But here's the next problem. I cannot use an NVMO with my cellular router. Nobody supports it except I can get Verizon to support it. I can get AT&T or Sprint to support it um, with T-Mobile, I guess. Um, But the problem is um, you don't have as good service. So like right now, uh, my Mint Mobile phone, I've not had service on my Mint Mobile phone for about two days now um, because I'm just Mm -hmm. in an area that T-Mobile simply doesn't cover. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now tomorrow I'll get back into T-Mobile range and my phone will beep and yell at me from all the voice messages and text messages I'm missing. <laughs> um, but um, here's the next problem though with Starlink as Luke Smith's video illustrated. Everything is app controlled. I'm not downloading the phone app. <laughs> yeah. And you're telling me you cannot put an ethernet cable on the side that I can plug it in and manage the thing with a computer. Now, I think he said some models can, you can, and some models you can't. 
Um, so that's one of the functions that we need to figure out. But that's kind of my, my presentation as more and more, uh, more and more these newer technologies are coming out. Nearly every new technology is requiring you to use phone apps to manage things, um, which introduces a lot of um, inherent vulnerabilities. What do you guys think about that? Anybody wants to jump in there? Uh, any uh, device that uh, any uh, device that uh, needs uh, an app in order to uh, configure it or use it, uh, then I'm not using that device. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. So I guess what I would say, is, you know, how every company, Apple, Google, whatever, they always say that they're secure and private, but they don't actually explain how. That's really like the big problem that I have with that is that mm. they don't actually explain how they're doing it. They're just saying that they're private and secure. Yeah, I know the answer mm -hmm. to that. Right? Yeah, they, like, they are um, secure and private from you. Well, well, um, hated one this week did a video uh, looking at you know talking about why phones are are better, and I I completely disagree on this premise. When oh, you're yeah. building a phone app, you're importing all these libraries, as we talked about last week yes. with the Tim Horton stuff. There's all these libraries that inherently do these things. You do not have those libraries on desktop applications. That's so true. while it'd be possible to embed a geolocation system in an application, if you're using FOSS applications, you know it's not there. <laughs> Unless it's explicitly needs that. You yeah. Know? Um, and so I like that video going, okay, let me give you, uh, let me give you a, a chance here. And he was not able to convince me of this. I, I would say a phone is not inherently more private than a desktop app. No. Um, and especially one of the things he said is that there's no unified desktop, um, you know, permission dashboards. Well, GNOME has it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of GNOME, but GNOME has it, and it wouldn't surprise me to see those coming down in several other places as well. But at yeah. the same time, we're, we're apples and oranges talking about applications that run on a phone versus applications that run on a computer. Um, so with that, though, yeah, the apps, if it has an app, Selby's point, has an app, I'm sorry, I'm not downloading your app. Because uh, unless yeah. you're allowing me to sideload it, I'll think about it, you know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the biggest right. thing that I'm figuring out, um, I'm using like either Lil Snitch or Open Snitch on. Mm -hmm. So Lil Snitch is for Mac OS, and then Open Snitch is for Linux. It's basically a mm -hmm. firewall slash network monitoring. And when I started using it, I saw a lot of really weird stuff that's going on. Like when I opened Firefox, it was communicating to Firefox, well, Mozilla, mm -hmm. essentially immediately. And then mm -hmm. lots of the applications that I use, there's a lot of internet connections that I didn't know about. So if you're using a phone, you don't know about it at all. You don't get mm -hmm. to see it. And that's the biggest problem as well is that you don't get to see it and you don't know what, what's really happening with your phone. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And one of the problems is that uh, more and more devices and applications on the devices are starting to use the uh, DNS over HTTPS uh, or uh, mm -hmm. over TLS um, in order to circumvent uh, local uh, blocking of uh, certain things. So uh, uh, your local server uh, or local router has no idea of what you are trying to connect to other than they are seeing traffic goes to some IP address, but there's no uh, um, uh, way of using DNS in order to stop this uh, mm -hmm. traffic. Yeah, and uh, if there's canary domains built in to bypass that, maybe slightly better, but you're not going to find a lot of the, the cheaper and lower end stuff with that built in. I don't know. There's a GitHub repo that I uh, saw last year somewhere uh, that uh, are attempting to uh, list all the uh, uh, DNS uh, over HTTPS uh, uh, IP addresses uh, that people can use in order for people to um, uh, using um, uh, IP tables and uh, in order to block those IP addresses. So any traffic to those are uh, just uh, stopped. But uh, that's mm -hmm. our, our, our cat and mouse game. You, you, uh, they still have to hunt them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Dan or Ivan want to jump in on this sub point here? Um, what I wanted to comment on is the Starlink, the amount of energy it uses. It has to use that kind of energy to actually transmit a signal back up to the satellite to work yeah. properly. That's mm -hmm. where most of your energy is going, is in the return trip back up to the sky. Mm -hmm. The trip yeah. that comes down from the sky is is not that bad because it's, it's, you're generally using a receiver to receive it. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is like with the upload versus download speeds and stuff like that. Yeah, I had a friend that had HughesNet, and it was a satellite, you know, type situation. Mm -hmm. And it used very little power to actually pull down stuff and watch stuff from YouTube. But when he had to upload stuff, man, his transceiver got very warm very quick. Mm. Yeah, so, so that would mean that for those of us living on the road, that probably would not be a good option for that. And maybe that's the people I was talking to. They were just using it maybe for more uploads. I don't know. I didn't ask what type of internet they were using. But it raises those questions, though, is that as our world gets more and more, um, of course, this, the major telecoms aren't going to invest to get internet out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and so with the internet you know, not getting out in the middle of nowhere, the next the next nail in the coffin of American Internet, at least, is with now all the cell towers are shutting down a lot of these uh, a lot of their bands to make use for this synchronous uh, 4G, which they're calling 5G. It's not 5G, but it's a synchronous 4G yeah. uh, to make things faster. But what it does is it hurts signal over broader distances, which means that the people right now that can get Internet because of cellular are going to lose the ability to get Internet when these bands are all decommissioned. Also that people in the city can download a two hour movie in 3.2 seconds. I don't know why you need to do that because you can just download it, you know, and stream it while you're downloading it. And oh no, no, the circle of doom, it's buffering. Get over it. Get over it. You're, yeah. you're beaming something down from the satellite. Okay. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. The biggest problem that I have is that they're not actually improving the technology. They're just let, letting the FCC, um, essentially make bands more available to them right so instead yeah. of improving the technology they're just up well, upping it, the frequency it's, it's improving the technology speed yeah. on a densely populated area to sacrifice suppose, yeah. the only functional internet we have in the middle of nowhere is anybody from the government listening you guys need to wake up and recognize this because that's, yeah, that's true yeah but uh, this is uh, not only uh, only the uh, internet speed that uh, is affected because uh, each time uh, one of those uh, bands is uh, shut down, then also uh, uh, voice traffic over the same band is um, uh, shut down. So uh, mm -hmm. if they uh, shut down the uh, 2G networks, which is starting to happen, uh, uh, they, they, uh, or, or the uh, uh, 3G network that is already shut down in Norway for two years now, I think. Um, yeah. Then uh, the phones that uh, use those um, 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 that uh, that only use two uh, G or three uh, G, uh, when both of those uh, bands are shut down, then you can't um, connect to the um, phone. Yeah, it, uh, in, and the phones become case. completely useless, and they're just now otherwise perfectly good phones that are now going to the landfill. Yeah. So yeah. where are all of the the save the planet anti climate change people with this? No, they're too busy trading in their perfectly fine iPhone for the latest version of the perfectly fine iPhone, participating in the rape of the landscape rather than actually conserving things. You know, let's yeah, see and them by used they are, and uh, scrapping by perfectly. And they are also scrapping perfectly fine uh, cars uh, for uh, uh, some uh, other cars with some other feature that is supposedly mm -hmm. saving the planet. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, which like is not. I mean, hey, I, I made everybody mad with the electric car stuff last Friday. Let's go ahead and make more people mad. All right, electric cars right now are not sustainable. Okay, you the <laughs> rape of if you if you think I'm on the stupid train for thinking electric cars are not going to save the planet right now, research what it takes to build the batteries for these things. You have to completely strip mine, rape the landscape in order to do it to pull out minerals that can only be used for a small amount of time and you cannot recycle those batteries after 10 years you have to drop another twenty thousand dollars to replace the batteries in those cars and on top of all that let's suppose we fix all the battery technology our power grid cannot handle everybody having an electric car there is one sure. good use of the uh, there's one good feature of having uh, on the electric cars that uh, some people are using there are not many but some are using it um some models I think uh, Teslas can do this. Um, um, it depends on uh, the, the charger that you are uh, uh, installing. But uh, some of the chargers, the, uh, the more pricey ones, can, can also um, uh, send, uh, in addition to uh, charging your car, it can draw power uh, the, the other way. So if there's a power outage, it can actually uh, power uh, your house. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, with with your Tesla, <laughs> you're not getting anywhere. What, what, we we really need, what we really need is we need nuclear powered cars with a 20 year lifespan. There you go. Or hydrogen. Longer. Like, I mean, hydrogen cars. Is that kicking off yet? Um, there's sure natural gas. Uh, they like, have like them in the, California. Yeah, there's natural gas uh, uh, buses in State College. For okay. good 20 years, the buses in State College have been running natural gas. Yeah, um, California has hydrogen fuel cell cars. Uh, Toyota makes them. Oh, really? But it, uh, from what I understand, the hydrogen fuel stations are kind of really far apart from each other and when you do find one you got to wait a long time just to get your car up to the pump to put the hydrogen in it well that's the problem though with the electric cars there's so few charging stations for them and it takes so long basically you need to right right now as i'm driving down the road okay i need gas let's pull in the gas station i can top off my tank and be back on the road in five minutes with an electric car, you guys wait around a couple hours to get just a 70% charge. So you're leaving your house right. fully charged car with 100 and I think was, I think the Teslas are now to like 250 mile range under perfectly optimal conditions. You drive 150 to maybe 175 miles, you're down to 50 mile range. You have to really start looking for these. You'll find a fueling station. You literally have to stop for about, I think it's a half hour. If somebody can double check this, um, I think it's like a half hour. Uh, to get up to like a 70 charge. So you're hanging out for at least half hour to an hour, only get 70% of your 200. So you can only now drive another 100 miles and then you have to stop for another hour and a half. <laughs> okay. Um, and so that's the, the, some of the challenges with, uh, with these uh, right now. And is it possible to make them to charge faster? I mean, if you put, excessively high voltage into them yes you could uh in theory they, they i know last um, long. yeah i mean well maybe maybe not um it, it depends on the battery composition so like my lithium batteries i use i, I have lifepo batteries which the you can um, they'll basically behave like iron man's suit if you feed a massive amount of current into it it'll just absorb it really quick um, so the more stuff you can feed into it, of course, it could get too hot and blow up. That's a problem. Um, but uh, which is why the charge controller will regulate the voltage to give it the maximum amperage. But what happens is um, they'll take the amount of power in uh, as fast as they can um, and then, of course, slowly discharge them. So if you give them enough of a bolt voltage boost, you can get them to charge up to at least that 70 percent range. Um, and this is where you have in the distance of, of engine chargers for vans, if you're using something like a pure alternator charger, can never top off a lithium ion battery. This is why what I have is a, uh, I have a DC to DC charger because that takes the alternator power. It converts it to a higher voltage, which actually allows you to top off a lithium battery. And these are all the little things you need to think about when you're looking at the electrical. And so, you know, that's kind of the case. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, the back to the, the internet. Uh, yeah. Back to the internet for a moment. Okay. Yeah, we, we should get um, off something the, I, the internet. We should just do a topic. Something, just I, something that I have noticed over a few years is you're kind of stuck with the kind of service that you get when you move into an area. If it has legacy cable that's been there for a while and legacy phone, they're not going to upgrade that quick. Um, mm -hmm. the new the newly built and and and, and uh, put together subdivisions and stuff like that those are the ones that are getting the latest technology and they're getting the gigabit speeds everybody hears about is places that are new to internet are being built and having internet put in they're not replacing our old stuff that we're used to to get us gigabit speeds Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Like uh, uh, up in Canada, like right during the pandemic, right before that, we only had DSL. That that was a struggle, right? But right at right. the pandemic, when we were still complaining with DSL, I'm sure lots of other people did, right? Because the pandemic, everyone had to work at home. At I'm on DSL time. right now. Yeah, but at least up in Canada, they started to just completely put fiber optics everywhere. And that's mm -hmm. how I got fiber afterwards. So I guess lots of people complain and it wasn't working that well. So they had to really push the infrastructure forward for that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Out where my cousin lived in Grass Lake, um, he lives out in a rural area, but they got like a, a two lane road that goes, you know, from one town to another. And they, um, the internet was almost non existent out there except for a, a hot spot. Mm-hmm. And the phone company went in and put fiber in down the whole length of the road from one town to another. Yeah. What happened was everybody caught wind of this. Everybody subscribed to it. So now everybody's got turtle speed fiber <laughs> because there's so many people on it. Yeah, that can happen. Uh, that that definitely happens really bad on DSL. Um, I'm not cable, not as much. I'm not sure how the fiber works. Um mm-hmm. Let me check in over on comments. DistroTube's in the house, if you're still around. DistroTube, greetings. How's it going there? Uh, let's see. We can call my connection fast, but it's not that slow. All right. Yeah, uh, RV satellites. Um, so Starlink is 120 a month, uh, $700. I think it's between between uh, three and three and $500, I thought, um, which my cellular uh, my cellular modem was 300 so that's not too outrageous. I mean, my, my cellular modem is this big. It's a tiny little box. That was 300 bucks. Um, my DSL is $72 a month, and they give me the modem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to fight with uh, Verizon to get this thing to work. They're like, I don't know how to support this thing. Well, it's on the support list. It has the bands. Make it work. All right. <laughs> Took a while, but we got it working. My iPhone will work with Verizon, and I use it quite frequently when the DSL goes out, which isn't very often. Yeah, S says I uh, S I says I had the same problem with the Wi-Fi router. Didn't know I had to download the app before I bought it. We're not about yeah. That's the point in time you take it back. You say this requires an app. I don't download apps. It doesn't specify so in a box. Give me a full refund. You know. Um, I have a flip phone. Here's your junk back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh somebody did i missed the comment here so he says you can get the the uh for an extra fee with starlink you can get the ethernet one yeah just make sure that if you are getting starlink to get the ethernet enable them but i'm still not 100 sure you even with the ethernet port you can manage the router I still think you need the app for that. The Ethernet port would work for me where I can pass the signal into my router for my router to do with it what it needs done. Yeah, then again, if you don't have Internet, there's lots of applications that depend on the Internet. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work at all, even if it doesn't really need the Internet well, to work. Well, how's this for fun? If your Comcast Internet goes out, they tell you to go to the website to figure out if it's if it's out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. I've experienced that I when remember I when I got internet uh, back in uh, uh, September or uh, August of uh, 1998. And after a few months, I brought the, uh, my ISP's uh, help pages and um, FAQ pages uh, just to see what they said about the uh, 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 things. And they had a page uh, saying that if you had uh, problems sending email, uh, you could send an email to, to the customer service in order to get help. <laughs> <laughs> it still says that to this day. <laughs> that's uh, exciting. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a big problem. I guess a solution would be for developers to make sure their apps work offline. That would be really the, the only way that I could think of. Unless there's yeah, something I don't else. know the issue about uh, um, everything uh, depend, uh, that uh, more and more uh, things are uh, dependent on uh, some internet connection working. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, in, the, in the Norway, there was a uh, couple of months ago, um, there was a uh, um, um, smart server some, somewhere, um, a, a company that, that shut down. That uh, the, the server that they shut down manages, uh, uh, was used to manage uh, some smart ovens, uh, uh, space heaters. Um, <laughs> And they, they won't work because uh, you can't turn them on without the uh, server working. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> wow. And it was minus 20 degrees centigrade outside. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. That was, I think, I think in Maine, several of the Nest thermostats went out in the middle of the winter because of, of a messed up over-the-air update. <laughs> All the people with vacation homes in Maine, their heaters stop oh working God. in the winter. Like, so, oh. would you consider them as critical devices? I think they should be and yes. should be with a higher standard. But um, it seems that they don't yes, care. Yes, because in United States, uh, particularly uh, landlord tenant law, it is illegal to cut off electricity uh, to somebody's house in the middle of the winter. 
Yeah, it's for non-payment. Yeah. They're not allowed. The pay electric companies. Uh, it's not even just rent, tenant landlord. It's it's power co- utility companies. Utility companies are not allowed to cut power for non-payment. Yeah, it's the same here. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's sorry, it's you, you haven't paid your your punishment is to freeze to death, pleb. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to take out a lien on your estate. <laughs> you hungry? Have a snow cone. <laughs> yeah. Die Master, speaking of email offline, I sent you a message on the site. Did you just send it? I was just looking at emails uh, before the show tonight. Um, but if you just sent one, um, remind me which one it was or uh, maybe I didn't get to it yet. Um, but yeah. All right. Um, I think we'll go ahead and wrap this one up, uh, here, uh, so I can get out of the, uh, probably empty parking lot at the closed store and, you know, go somewhere a little bit less inconspicuous, uh, for the night. Uh, a little question about Monaro, just start fiddling with Monaro. Oh, oh, you send the one about questions about like cryptocurrency stuff. I have not done a ton with cryptocurrency, so I'm not the person to ask about it. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. we will not be streaming on the Christian channel tonight. So, um, uh, I just need to take a, take a day no. off of that. So, um, uh, it was going to be something like horrible with like groomers and drag queens and stuff, but, uh, no, not today. Um, Yay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, the groomers have come out. It's gotten so bad. Somebody didn't think about it. Um, uh, but it was like, uh, it was like a, um, uh, like a barber shop or something, they like bad messaging. It didn't cross them, but they did the whole rainbow thing, and the statement said "groom with pride." <laughs> like <laughs> really bad optics right now. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, we're yeah. So we're not streaming on the Christian channel tonight. Uh, we're gonna take a night off, get caught up on some work. We will be back with the weekly news roundup tomorrow, though. Any final words for everybody? Yeah, um, I'm just going to, uh, for me, I'm going to end with uh, a meme that I saw the, uh, the other week um, about the smart devices and so on, uh, uh, where someone who is uh, um, uh, a, a geek uh, uh, have all these smart devices because, because he is a comp- uh, computer geek and uh, an IT developer uh, has no uh, smart um, uh, devices of any kind uh, precisely because he is a uh, computer and a programmer and you know how how, how, um, how these things uh, um, uh, operate so <laughs> he he will he he, uh, he is not going to have any smart locks or uh, sm- uh, smart uh, anything um, uh, if anything starts to move uh, without he doing anything he would just uh, smash it <laughs> yep there you go there you and go I'm the, I, I am the same yep Ivan, yeah. thoughts? Yeah, yeah. I, I was just thinking about the whole Star Lake thing. I just happened to see an article eh, within the past five days about, oh, now we've got this whole thing for like RVing and van lifers and stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, that's great and everything like that, but have you fixed your power requirement problems? Well, I got a crappy oh, connection yeah. to you guys. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, I so, said, yeah, you were knocking out there. Yeah. Um, yeah, that yeah. the power like Starlink will be great if they can solve the power problems. Uh, Dan, final thoughts? Yeah, you said a signal was there, okay. and that's not uh, well, right. Uh, World of Unix, final thoughts? Yeah, I guess the biggest thing, uh, especially on the internet, is that we need more tools to monitor it because it seems there's lots of stuff going on behind the back that people don't know about, mm-hmm. and especially like internet connections going to random places. And what yeah. little snitch I saw. Some connections that weirdly went to China and some weird places and then yeah. either uninstalled the app or it was either because uh, I was uh, doing peer-to-peer, which technically connects all around the world, but I was able to see it. So I guess it's just having more tools to, to see it. That's the first thing. And yeah, maybe I should, sure, yeah. I should investigate using Wireshark and stuff. That'd be a fun thing to do. Yeah, and also making sure that applications don't need an internet to run because when you don't have internet, that, which is a real possibility, it screws everything and, up. And this is why I like Linux because the, you can run them without without internet stuff. Dan, your final words? Yeah. Um, yeah, my internet connection keeps dropping in and out. It's a um, beautiful, wonderful American internet. Yeah, right when we <laughs> to talk about it, you know, poof. Um, yeah. If you have internet, you know, you're probably broke. <laughs> if you don't have internet, you know, you got maybe one less utility. You're also utility broke because you can't do anything. 
<laughs> yeah, you're, you know, you can't win for anything anymore. Yeah. They do need to come up with a better internet infrastructure plan for this country because it's there's no incentive for anybody to fix anything. Yeah, that's mm. a problem. All right. Yeah, we'll wrap this one up here. Thanks for watching, everybody. And we'll be back uh, tomorrow with the weekly news roundup. And uh, we 